Pollination is critical to agriculture. In fact, there are about a hundred different crops that rely on cross-pollination in order to bear fruit. Without pollination, you don't get seed set, and without seed set, you don't get the growth of fruits and vegetables and nuts, and again, a hundred different crops that rely on insect pollination. When it comes to pollinators, they're not all the same. While there are many species of butterflies, moths, birds, even some bats that perform pollination services, the vast majority of pollinators are bees because they're so highly specialized in performing that service for their own natural histories. Now, there are about 20,000 species of bees worldwide. 450 of them are native to, to North Carolina. But there's only one state insect, and that is the honeybee. Honeybees are actually not indigenous to North America. They were imported by early European settlers. But they live in colonies, unlike the vast majority of these other bee species that are solitary and live on their own. And they exist in about 60,000 individuals within a given hive. And as a result, those hives can be transported from one place to another in order to provide that pollination ecosystem service. And so while these solitary bee species are incredibly important for pollination services, they're wild living and therefore they're very hard to control their numbers and their populations and where they live and exist. Honeybee colonies, on the other hand, can be moved and managed and grown by humans. And as a result, they are the most important managed pollinators in our agricultural economy. Now, these other solitary bee species are about equally as important to their pollination contributions in agriculture. And on a bee for bee basis, most of them are more efficient and effective pollinators than a single honeybee. But because honeybees live in colonies of 60,000 individuals and they can be readily managed and moved in and out of orchards and crops, the agricultural economy has really become reliant on managed honeybees to perform that ecosystem service. Now, as a result of this semi-domestication of honeybees, beekeepers have been having problems with their management of colonies because of parasites and pathogens, the pesticides that they are exposed to while they're out foraging in, in the environment, nutritional problems where they're not able to get sufficient nectar and pollen, which is their two food sources, and then genetic bottleneck problems that we're having in the, in the stock of honeybees as they're being raised. When it comes to climate change, it can affect honeybees indirectly more than it will affect them directly. Because they live in colonies, they thermoregulate their hives to within about a half a degree. And so honeybees are found from practically from pole to pole, and they can manipulate the temperature of their colonies very well. So a warming climate is really not going to affect honeybees very much. As long as they have food to eat, they will be able to generate warmth when it's cold and cool the hive down when it's hot. However, indirectly, it can very much affect bees and all pollinators by the lack of plants and the lack of habitat that can sustain them for their food supply. So without proper nutrition, then honeybees can be affected by climate change. But directly through global warming, it's unlikely that it will do so. And as a result of these challenges, Beekeeping has really become unsustainable in the sense that there are far more colony die-offs every single year than beekeepers feel like they can endure. And so over time, beekeepers need to constantly be growing back their stock every single year in order to provide that pollination population that agriculture has come to rely. And so here at NC State, we've been trying to identify solutions to these problems that beekeepers have been facing, trying to identify ways to make the colonies healthier and stronger and therefore more productive and therefore a more reliable managed pollinator population. In the end, what we hope to accomplish is an agricultural system that can rely just as much on the natural wild bees that are living in nature, as well as the managed bees that honeybees 
can provide to those pollination services. So if we can work towards an end where there can be recommendations given to growers about the need for honeybee colonies or not to bring in honeybee colonies because the native bees are able to provide that pollination service, that's the best way to, to approach the challenge of pollination in our agricultural economy.